Hello again everyone. This video lecture follows directly from the previous one where we where we introduced the idea of using phasers to represent sinusoidal voltages and currents and using complex numbers and finally we're going to use that we're going to put it all together and actually complete the KVL example we started last time. So the details that we'll be showing in this lecture are are pretty pretty complete but at the end of it, we'll boil it down to a very simple procedure that we can follow for all of our circuits to come. Okay, the key to the success of this analysis method is uh, Euler's identity. And it, it is, you know, a key property that, is the, that makes this work. And what it does is it relates complex exponential to, to a trigonometric function like a cosine. And, and here it is, here's Euler's identity, e to the j theta, so it's a complex exponential, is cos plus j sine. And now if we modify this slightly and multiply both sides by m, so m is, would be a magnitude, um, so we get m on both sides like so. So notice a couple of things here. So the, the term on the left here is another way of, of um, representing a phasor. This is a complex exponential and another way of, of expressing m at an angle of theta. So, and on the right hand side is, is basically the rectangular, uh, the rectangular version of this thing. So, um, so m cos theta on the real axis, m sine theta on the uh, imaginary axis. And so, for example, if we take a number, number say 10, e to the j theta, this is uh, a vector, basically, at uh, length 10, angle 30 from the positive real axis. Now, let's use Euler's identity to do what we need it to do. So... Once again, x equals 10 to the j, 30 degrees. So that's where it works out to in rectangular coordinates. <clears throat> and so now expressing the real part of this, let's just do the real part. So the real part of x is the, obviously the cosine part, not the sine part. And it evaluates to 8.66, cos, cos of 30 times 10. Imaginary part is 10 e to the j30, and that's the sine component, and that works out to 5. Okay, so the overall complex exponential, its value is 8.66 plus j5. Okay, now, writing KBL and KCL equations, or, or any, any other equation, like node voltage mesh current, it doesn't matter. Now using phasers. So now, in red here, this is the key step. This is what how it all works. So what we're going to do is express the cosines, and that's what we have in our old v, uh, KVL expression. Express them as complex exponentials using Euler's identity. Now you might think that that's making the things worse, but it's actually making things a lot better. It's actually a lot easier to deal with a complex exponential than, than a trig function like this. So, again, this, this is what we're going to replace. If we have a cosine of something, anything, we can express it as the real part of this complex exponential. So, we're now ready to go back to our original KVL example. And let's make this substitution for the three cosine waves that we were adding up. So, once again, just to remind you, this is what we were trying to solve. So the, the addition of three cosine waves that are all a little bit different. They all just have the same frequency, which is important, but all have, well, they, we have a varying magnitudes and angles. So our starting point here is exp exp um, express each term as one of these complex exponentials. So V1. So this is what it is in the time domain. This is what it will be in the phasor domain. And, and likewise for V2. And 
and finally for V3. Okay, so now we have these all expressed in terms of complex exponentials. Now let's see how this. Let's see why this is easier. So let's now rewrite our addition of the three sinusoids as the addition of these three complex exponentials. So that's all we're doing in this point, this part right here. Okay. Now the next step thanks to complex exponentials, is we can bust some of these up. And so, and we can begin by simplifying this expression by recognizing that the sum of the real parts is the same as the real part of the sum. So let's, let's sum the real parts. And so here they are. We're just summing these three complex exponentials taking the real part of the sum. And notice what we're doing here is we're breaking up these complex exponentials where there's a phase angle. So that's what's nice about using complex exponentials. And now, now we can factor out a common term with those three, three exponential terms. And it leaves us with uh, something in parentheses times the common factor. Now, Look at this thing inside the, the parentheses. There, this is a constant. These are just complex constants. There's no time. There's no nothing. There's just, these are just numbers. So this represents the addition of three complex constants, so phasors. And this is the factor that we factored this term out. Okay, so it's what's in, that, in between the parentheses here that is basically our answer. So let's let's uh, let's pr let's proceed from there. So what we have now is a complex addition. So let's do it. So we have three complex numbers. Let's add them up. So remember that we have to do complex addition in the in terms of rectangular coordinates. So we got to turn this stuff all into rectangular. Okay. So here they are. 10 plus j0, 4.33 minus j2.5, and finally a purely imaginary one, 0 plus j5. So let's add them up. And so as usual, we'll add all the real parts, add all the imaginary parts, and we'll get a combined complex number. And so here it is, 14.33 plus j2.5. So you can think of Think of that as the addition of three vectors. So taking one vector, tacking it on the end of, of the first vector, and then doing the same for the third vector. So let's turn this back now into polar coordinates. Okay, so now we have a single vector, combined vector. This is a resultant vector of, of length 14.54 at an angle of 9.9 .9 degrees. <clears throat> okay, so... Let's put it back into the equation that we labeled as 1, which is just above. Okay, so here it is. So we've, we've done our complex addition, and this is what it's turned out to be. So that's the stuff within the parentheses. There's our e to the j omega t common term. And now let's, let's recombine um, the, the exponentials here. Okay, and one more step, so 14.54. And then, again, let's combine these two exponentials, and we get a single complex exponential with j omega t plus 9.9. .9. Okay, final step, we're done. So using Euler's identity, once again, in reverse, essentially, so once again, real part of e to the j x is cos of x. So our answer. So 14.54, so that's the magnitude. Omega t plus 9.90, that's the phase. And so this is what we to refer to as our time domain expression. So v of t. 
Okay, now we did a lot of extra steps there, and that was really sort of to demonstrate exactly what we're doing, why it works. But now here's what it boils down to. Here's, here are the steps that we'll need to follow when we're doing analysis of circuits later. And we'll be doing quite a bit of it. So first, as you saw, just take our cosine functions and express them as phasors. And so just to summarize, V1 bar, <coughs> which we, so starting with the V1 of T in the time domain, there it is again. Its phasor notation is 10 at 0 degrees. Okay, likewise V2. And its phasor notation is V2 bar is 5 at minus 30 degrees. And we evaluated that to be 4.33 minus J 2.5. So V3 of T, the last one, 5. Uh, so it's so a phasor notation 5 at 90 degrees. So 0, 0 plus J5. And then we do the addition. So step 2. So use these phasors. So in the KVL equation. So now we've got numbers we'll stick back in the KVL equation. So here it is in phasor form. So let's plug our numbers in. And we get the answer we determined above. So once again, that's 14.54 at 9.9 .9 degrees. And in many cases, you know, a problem may ask you to stop there. You know, what's, what's the voltage in phasor notation? Other problems may, might ask you to complete the, complete the job and then to convert that back to a um, time domain expression. So let's finish off that now. So once again, we can do that by inspection. It's very easy. So our final voltage, this is the voltage on the source, which was the sum of the three sinusoidal voltages. So 14.44 uh, cos omega t plus 9.9 .9 degrees. So that's it. So those are the three steps. Now, just to close this out, one, one very common thing to do is to draw a phasor diagram of all the phasors involved, or, or most, many or most of the phasors involved in a calculation like this. Okay, and so this is what it looks like. So it's a graph uh, showing vectors. It's in the complex plane. And so in our little example there, we had four vectors and so we'll, we'll, we're not doing them in order, but let's do um, each one and label them in a minute here. But anyway, here's the four of them. Each gets a different color. And now let's label them. This was our resultant. This was our answer, 14.54 at 9.9 .9 degrees. And here are the component vectors here. So there was V3, which is 5 at 90 degrees. This was V1, which was 10 at 0 degrees. This was V2 at minus, uh, V2, which was 5 at minus 30 degrees. So this is how we'll analyze AC circuits in, in, the, in the lectures to come using phasers and, and complex numbers. Now, what we have left out so far, and we made reference to this earlier, is omega, the radian frequency. So that has not yet come into play, but it's very important. And that's what we'll be pursuing next. We'll be talking about inductors and capacitors, and they are very, they are frequency dependent. So that is coming. Uh, meanwhile, now we have a uh, document that may help you um, uh, convert from uh, polar to rectangular and vice versa um, using your calculator, your Schulich calculator. And so I'll take you to the website now and show you this document. So either uh, through a direct URL or links on D2L, go to our main public website and you'll see a, a new link there. And here's the document that's available to everyone. And it's basically to show you how to convert uh, polar to rectangular 
and vice versa for the three sanctioned Schulich calculators.